Hello there, it's Saturday the 20th of October 2012. Welcome along to this week's United Kingdom Talk. My name's Chris Ridden. A couple of people asking, um, some people just listen, some people watch, but uh, often people want to know what are the other ways of watching or listening to this show, so I shall tell you now. Uh, first of all, you can download this show on iTunes, either the video version or the audio version. Just type into iTunes uh, United Kingdom Talk and you should see both uh, versions come up there. All right. Also, Marge, a uh, regular correspondent now to the show, uh, wanted to know uh, by private email, how does she get the MP3? Now, Marge watches the show on YouTube. Very easy, Marge. All you have to do is go to the main website for the show, United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk and at the top of that page uh, you'll see directions or instructions on how to just download the audio uh, side of things much more many, many more people uh, just listen to the show rather than watch it presumably in cars and things like that all right marge and you could put it on a little iplayer or something ipod thing whatever and listen in bed this show is guaranteed boys and girls absolutely guaranteed to send you to sleep. Although, perhaps not in the case of uh, Matthew Joplin, who has also become a correspondent. Matthew is a one-line correspondent. He tends to write, watch a show and just writes a one-line comment on the Facebook thing, you know. By the way, my Facebook username, if you want to join us on that, is uh, Chris Reardon UK, right? Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Uh, Matthew writes... Um, Sunday morning in bed with a nice cup of tea and United Kingdom talk. Can't beat it. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, quite frankly, I'd much rather be watching the latest episode of Merlin or Casualty. Wonderful stuff on the telly at the moment, I have to say. Come into that in a minute. And Matthew also writes, uh, you went over the 60-minute mark last week, but I do think an hour is just right for a weekly show. I, I, I have to admit, I got to the... Um, end of the show last week and I thought oh that's a little bit long you know an hour long I thought it was a little bit too long last week but you don't thing is once you're once you're in full flow you don't really realize how long it's going on for I'm sure you realize you know as as you're listening longer and longer the eyelids are getting more and more heavy aren't they and it, I don't think anyone listen I don't think anyone watches past the first 30 seconds to be honest I'm sure listeners listen more than watchers do or viewers do. What do you reckon? Now, I seem to have lost an email. Let me see if it's over here. Just a second. And um, is it here? No. I seem to have lost an email. Yeah. So I must apologise to... Hang on, is it up here? I can't find this anywhere. I generally print them off and leave them on the printer until record day, which is uh, usually Friday for me. It's not here, is it? Oh, gosh. Um, no, it's not here. And the email was quite a long one, I think, from Guillermo. Guillermo. And there might have been one also... No, uh, look, oh, there's one from James. I thought I'd lost his one as well. Uh, Guillermo, I lost your email somewhere that you do so kindly sent this week. Do you still have it in your sent items folder? And could you send it again, please? Please? And then I'll read it on the next week's show. Sorry, I, I, I held it on the system. And sometimes I go through the system and I delete the things. And if I haven't printed it off, it's, it gets very confusing. What, what happened? It was so much easier when you just had one computer. And that's where all the emails went and all this business. Now, I tend to gather emails from this computer, from the laptop, from the mobile phone. And sometimes, oh, did I print that? Yeah, I printed that one. And then you delete it and it's gone. And I think that's what's happened. So a thousand apologies to you there, sir. I don't mean to do these things, honestly. I want to read your little letters. Possibly not, not, not an hour-long hour show this week, though, OK? Um, talking of uh, TV programmes, I'm very, very pleased to let you know that I have now got off, or out of the habit of watching that disaster of all TV programmes, The Only Way Is Essex. At last, I've got over to habit. I've got to tell you, I never enjoyed a single episode of that. They can't act. They can't deliver lines properly. They're not funny. They're so over-made up. 
and they are fake, 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 fake. I don't like fake people. You know, it's all a put on and it's pathetic. The whole thing is pathetic. And the only reason I ever watched it was to see how much worse a particular episode was than the episode last week. My nephew, Jimmy, 15, he absolutely loves this program. He loves it. His hero is Jerry Essex. I've told you this before. It's all very sad, really. I mean, I just think it's very sad. Now, is this an age thing? Because my other nephew, Gary, he's a, a recent father. My, uh, my, uh, my great niece, Evie, is now six months old. Now, I did say to you, I would try and get a video. They did a video of her running around in the walker. I haven't been able to get that down off the line. I'm still trying to do that. I'm having a little bit of technical wizardry with that one, OK? Uh, yes, he's a recent father, and he too likes The Only Way as Essex. Now, is it an age thing? Do you watch that programme? And how old are you, and what do you think of it? Please let me know on the email. My email address is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co you go because i just think it's a total and utter disaster like most of the output on itv2 it's just so blooming fake fake people false this and false that and false personalities as well awful awful people it's not funny it's just awful what do you think of that programme? Anyway, I'm very glad to say no longer will it fill up space on my hard disk recorder downstairs. Nope, it's gone. No more recordings. Don't watch it anymore. Thank you very much. Load of trash. Absolute load of trash. Do you watch it and what do you think of it? Please let me know on the email. And how old you are as well, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, There's a, a, I mean, as I said before, a lot of the output of ITV2 is just dire. Just absolutely dire. Uh, they had that Mark Wright's Hollywood Nights thing. Um, what is this? something I was watching this week called Girlfriends? Right, Girlfriends. And it's, it's just a meat market. So these three girls are sitting on a settee and they have to choose uh, a, a, a bloke to go out with. So they wheel in these blokes one at a time and these three girls are literally giving them an interview seeing if they would be suitable to go out with a date for. I mean, it's just hideous. It is hideous. And the, the lad's got to sit there and sell himself. And um, I did make a note, a couple of notes. So one, of, one of the boys, they were talking about holidays and things like that. And he says, well, he said, the problem is when, when you're going out with, 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 with a girl, you know, it's difficult to go on lads' holidays. Uh, 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 and... And one of the girls says to him, she said, well, why is that? He's, and he said, his exact words were, remember, he's trying to attract one of those, one, one of the girls. And he was very good looking. He was very good looking. I wouldn't have said no. OK. And um, his answer to that was, well, you know how it is on lads' holidays. You're bound to end up and go and bang someone. That was his exact words. And remember, he is trying to impress these three girls. Right? Oh, it gets better. It gets better. Then one of the girls, when they fancy him, they say to him, would you like to come out for a chat? And then they go out in the garden and start talking. And this girl was strangely attracted to this bloke who just said that. I mean, she's got no self-respect at all, is she? <laughs> Why would you say that to someone? How is that an attractive thing to say something like that? It's just totally unbelievable. It really is. And, and that's, the ba that's, that's the basis of it. You know, they're sitting there. And then there was another one. There's another one. And he was good looking as well. And two of the girls showed interest. And one of the girls says, she said, well, I really like you, but I'm not going to take it any further because I know you're connected with, with, with the one on the end. At which point he says, well, I wouldn't mind going out on a date with both of you. How is that attractive? <laughs> so, as I say, another program on ITV2 to avoid called Girlfriends. It's awful. Um, I have to say, the people on that program, 
uh, all three of the girls and the boys who were coming in, they didn't come across as fake at all. Not not like the only wears Asic. They they weren't fake. But it, I just think it was a bit too. Can I use the term raw? It was a bit too raw. Anyway, have you seen that one? Let us know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Perhaps you're in another part of the world and uh, you have a similar programme to that. Well, I, I don't know what it would be called there. Perhaps you'll let me know, OK? Chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, over on Channel 5, 9 o'clock every Wednesday night, Dallas is doing the rounds and we are just totally into Dallas. Totally and utterly into Dallas. Uh, certainly on this week's episode, JR didn't make much of an appearance. And I get, I, I, I'm starting to get the feeling that the producers of the, of the new series of Dallas are trying to push the emphasis onto the new cast away from JR. I'm not sure if that's working or if that is the intention, but there, there seem to be a lot more of JR's son, um, John Ross, and Christopher in it. Uh, although Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Ewing, original Bobby Ewing, is still in it a lot as well. So I don't know if they're trying to kind of, try, you know, they've kind of continued to this point of JR being kind of central character. I think they're trying to get us to get onto the newer characters, if you see what I mean. Don't know if it's coming across that like, like, like that to you, which isn't a problem because the show is just fantastic. I mean, it really is. Are you watching Dallas? If not, why not? Here in the UK, Channel 5 on Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock, and I think they repeat it once or twice, and, of course, on, on all the uh, catch-up business and all that. Are you watching Dallas? Did you watch Dallas? And perhaps um, you, you've seen the first few episodes, and you're thinking, no, I don't like it. I'd like your thoughts on that, please. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, in the USA, are you in the USA? How is Dallas doing there? Because I don't know the figures. Uh, the figures aren't particularly good here. I think they were saying about one and a half million people are watching it, which is way, way, way down uh, on the uh, when it was being shown in the 80s. On the other hand, it is on a more, shall we say, a minority channel on Channel 5. And actually, one and a half million viewers for a program on Channel 5 is pretty good. It's very good. It's double what they normally get for watching a show. So presumably Channel 5 are, are pleased with it. I don't know how much it's costing them. Uh, but the guy who owns Channel 5 is, is hideously rich. I don't, I don't know if a station runs at a loss or what. But, um, uh, you know, I must say, um, I record... I don't record it. My best mate records does. He's got, he's got a, the high definition Sky thing. I don't have uh, Sky Television here, um, so I could record it. But he's got the high definition, and he records it in high definition, and um, on his Sky Box thing. And we don't watch the adverts. In fact, I think most of the stuff that I now watch on the television, other than the news, is recorded. It's on the hard disk recorder, you know. So I actually. Never really watched the advert. I can't think. I'm trying to think when I last watched a whole advert. I haven't done that for weeks. Gets to the adverts. Click. Fast forward. Stop it quickly on the other end. And that's with everything I watch. You know, Downton Abbey. Fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Downton Abbey. You've got to watch it. If you missed the first couple of series, worth buying the DVDs. I promise you. Really good Downton Abbey. Fantastic programme. Uh, and on ITV, surprisingly enough, you know, with the amount of crap that they're putting on at the moment. Um, yeah, Downton Abbey. Get the first lot, two lots of CDs. We're on uh, Series 3 um, at the moment. But I don't watch many adverts. I kind of wonder um, how many people now watch the adverts. You just flick through, don't you? Do you actually sit down at, I don't know, uh, 9 o'clock on a Wednesday night to watch Dallas? Or do you record it and, like me, you flick through all the adverts? I'll be interested to hear on that one. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Because I don't think the advertisers, which, let's be honest with this, pay for television, are getting their fair whack of, uh, of exposure. Yes, the adverts are going on there. But I have a feeling most people, like me, are recording things and flicking through the ads. Do you do that? 
little poll for you there. Let us know, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. On the internet, I notice, um, I think with the ITV player, uh, when the adverts come on, you can't flick through them. Am I right there? I, I, I'm sure I'm right with that one. I don't think you can flick through adverts on the internet, on the ITV player, and so also some of the YouTube stuff. You know, sometimes you see a, an ad come on and you can't flick through it. You have to sit there and watch it. But certainly on the television, don't watch adverts anymore. Just flick straight through them. Unless I see one that I know and I like. For example, um, do you know the Virgin adverts? When the girls are all dressed in red and they're like walking through the airport really sexily. And it's got like other airport staff from other airlines who, who are not named, you know, but you, you know that some of those are British Airways. Some of those are easy to get and all that. And, and they look, look down their noses at them or, 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 or don't like them as these beautiful girls walk through in like red um, high heeled shoes and sexy dresses and all that and the, the pilots in the middle with one on each arm I love that's one of my favourite adverts that is I don't show that one much anymore but I don't watch adverts you tell me Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and there does seem to be more and more adverts now on the telly I don't know why why that is because they can't be making any more money can they through putting on more adverts I can't believe they're able to charge ITV, what they used to charge for putting adverts on the telly. I reckon it's cheaper, and that's why we've got more of them. But it's just annoying. I think, I think at first, where's my other slipper gone? My foot's cold. Put my slipper back on. I think at first, when I, because I don't really watch stuff on Channel 5, and very rarely on ITV. At first, I was getting annoyed with the amount of adverts on Dallas, but I think I've got used to it now, because I just simply flick through. But they don't seem to put the adverts in at the right point. You're watching halfway through a sentence, it cuts off, and bang, the adverts are there. There's no break in between adverts and program, and that annoys me as well. But we've spoken about that one before. So um, there's Dallas. Uh, Downton Abbey, you've got to watch that one. As I say, loads of good stuff on the telly. Merlin, Merlin is just getting fantastic. BBC One, Saturday nights, various times, it seems, to keep changing the time, sort of between uh, 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock. At some point in there, you'll get Merlin, which is just fantastic. Two dragons in that now. We've got the big old dragon and a little, little dragon who appears to be, uh, uh, who, who can't talk. And Merlin spoke to him this week or tried to speak to him. And the little dragon can't talk. And I think Morag, is it Morag? I think she's been abusing that dragon. I think she's been nasty to that dragon. And at some point, the dragon, I think, is going to turn on her. I do think that, but Merlin Merlin gets on with the little dragon as well, which is quite nice. Love Merlin. And uh, one more programme, and it was on a couple of weeks ago now, uh, but I'd recorded it and I've only just finished watching them, was Hotel GB. Did you see that Hotel GB? Where they get these celebrities in to run a hotel, OK? They are the management staff, and then the management staff bring in lots of young people who hope to get jobs out of the experience. Now, it was only on for a week, so to get all these, uh, it was about, I can't remember how many, but the various young people in uh, to do various jobs, such as reception. Uh, and who was in charge of the reception? It was that, um, oh, that, that lady, Portis, Mary Portis. Is, it, is that how you say her name? Mary Portis, who's just brilliant. She's just fantastic. So she was looking after the front desk, I think. There was Gok, Gok Wan, who was looking after the um, uh, bar, bar area. There was that chef, not Harry Ramson. <laughs> um, the one who swears a lot. Oh, bloody hell, what's his name? Gordon Ramsay. There was Gordon Ramsay. He was looking after the kitchen. Uh... And there was Phil, Phil from one of the house programmes. He was supposed to be looking after the serving uh, of, of, of customers in a restaurant. He was bloody useless. Absolutely useless. He just, just, he's like a wet blanket he was. The, the, you know the bloke I mean? Bald head, uh, younger than me, probably about 35, 32, 35, something like that. He was supposed to be serving a customer. He was particularly useless, like a wet blanket he was. I mean, you can't learn anything from, from someone who don't know what they're doing, can you? 
And who was the other? There was another two celebrities. Oh yes, um, the elderly lady with the with the loads of blonde hair who does the cleaning. Can't think of her name. She's fantastic, and she's very very. She just says what she thinks. That's why I like her. She just says what she thinks. This woman. She was in it. And um, there was one more. Was there one more celebrity? That's. Not in my mind. Yes, uh, someone else who does house programmes. She was a, a little bit wishy-washy as well. And um, then there was these these kids that came in and tried to learn the jobs. And some were very good. There was a blonde girl, I think, from Liverpool. Can't remember her name. She was fantastic. and She, she stepped up to the job and, and done it and everything she was asked to do. There was one lad there called Tom. Oh, God. He started on reception and you just... It was like pulling teeth. It really was. He had no get up and go in him. You, do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, 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 it was, it was just so slow and painful watching him try to do anything. And they moved, I think they moved him off the reception in the end and put him to, to help the lady who does the cleaning and all that. And he had to clean, uh, uh a hotel room before the before the next people come in. He had ten minutes to do it. Forty five minutes later, he's still changed in the sheets on the bed, and she's going, "Look, come on, you've got to go fast." And he's like, "Oh, I'm doing my best." It was just so slow. He didn't have a clue and no get up and go in him at all. There was uh, a girl in there, Rory. Her name was uh, came across as she had an arrogance problem. She didn't like to be told what to do. Remember, these people are looking for jobs and can't understand. Some of them have had jobs and can't hold them down. Others hadn't had a job for a long time. And she, you, you just wouldn't want to employ her. You know, when she was told to do something, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Not doing that. So she was, she was pretty awful. She was, um, I, I wouldn't want to employ her. I wouldn't want to employ Tom because he was just, it was no get up and go in. No, he seemed to have no interest in doing it. And then when they interviewed him, he would say stuff like, oh, you know, I really want this job and all that. And you thought, well, well, show us, show us that you want the job. Put some bloody effort into it, dear. <laughs> oh, God, it was painful watching him. Uh, she had an attitude problem. There was a lad, can't remember his name, um, tall lad, bit of facial hair, very, very good looking. He was doing, um, now was he doing the cooking or the serving of the food? I think he was doing the serving of the food. He seemed to have a little bit of an attitude problem as well. Um, there was a, a, a young guy with glasses who was doing the cooking with uh, Gordon Ramsay. He was really good. I mean, really good. He was given tasks. He stepped up to the tasks and that's it. The only thing is, there was another boy in there um, called possibly Phil. Can't remember now. And he seemed to be getting a little bit jealous that the other one was getting a lot of attention and he wasn't. But they were all good in the kitchen. And there was a girl in the kitchen uh, of Asian appearance, Chinese Asian appearance, uh, no disrespect to anyone. That that's how I, that's how it came across, you know, with the eyes, um, uh, uh, you know, like like Japanese eyes or whatever. And um, she was very good as well. Can't remember her name. I think she won. I think she won a job at the end of it. She was fantastic, really good. But you know, when I watched Gordon Ramsay and these kids and the way he spoke to them and all that, and I thought he's a good bloke to work for. If he was a, if I had. You know, a, 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 a son or a daughter who were looking for a job. I would want them to go to because he would knock them into shape. And basically, that's what a lot of them need. They need to be knocked into shape. I don't mean slapped about or anything like that. They've got to be told. And Gordon Ramsay told them. He told a couple of them. He told the, the girl Rory a couple of times, you know, we'll get out. Don't want you here. You know, the trouble is she, she just went. <laughs> I think she walked out at one point and then came back again. I don't know. But sometimes that is how you've got to talk to people to knock them into shape. And later on down the line, in later life, they will thank you for that. I remember a long time ago um, when I left school and for a while I, I, I didn't work. A few weeks I didn't work. And the reason I didn't work was not that I didn't want to work. I was scared. I was scared because 
all my life, you know, up to that point, I'd gone to school, da, da, okay, go to school, da, da, da. and then the school ends, and you've got to do something new. You've got to go out, go out and meet new people. I was terrified, absolutely terrified. My mum had arranged a job at the local college where she worked as a, a, a gardener, actually. Um, they knew I had no experience and all that business. I would have been taught. They would have taught me what to do. I probably would have learnt it, no problem. I'm quite good with hands on things. If you show me how to do something, I can usually pick it up like that. And my mum had arranged all this. They didn't ask for qualifications or anything like that. I didn't have many qualifications. All I had was two O-levels, English and physics. That was it. I was pretty useless at school um, uh, uh, academically, you know, learning stuff from books and writing it all down and all that business. Um, but uh, 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 to, to, but he shown something, I could do it like that. So I probably would have done a while. But I was terrified. And on the morning... On the more, I, I already had uh, a couple of little jobs uh, in supermarkets, you know, stacking shelves on the till, mopping the floors, that thing. One in a in a private supermarket. Yeah, there was only two of the shops there, and another one was at Millet's, which was a, a camping shop in Putney. And I'd done those jobs for uh, a couple of years, you know, just to get a little bit of pocket money and whatever. So I had worked, um, but uh, I. For some reason, I was terrified at, at going to this gardening job. And it came on that morning, and I didn't go. Mum, I always remember Mum coming into the room and and uh, said, uh, right, you've got to get up for work. And I said, I, I, I don't want to go, Mum, I don't want to go. And that's it. And she kind of left it. And when Dad came back that night, <gasps> he was fuming. He was absolutely fuming. He told me I couldn't, if, if I thought, you know, I was going to lay, that, they never chucked me out. I was never, ever chucked out of my home. You hear these stories, don't you? You know, you hear these stories um, of of people that don't get on with their parents and what have you. And to me, I, I can't comprehend that. Because as far as I'm concerned, myself and my sister, we had the best parents in the world. I know you always hear people saying that. But I really did. Really did. Can't think of a single time that I ever heard mum and dad have a row i only ever never ever heard my mum swear i only ever once heard my dad swear which was this occasion where he told me that i wasn't going to lay in bed all day i was going to go out and get a job you can't lay in bed all day and i think a little row broke up and i ran up into the bedroom and that was it and then i think within a couple of days i went or maybe the next day i went down the supermarket where i had the full the part-time job and went full-time and, and kind of dad was happy with that right but do you see what i mean he did that because he loves me you see and in a way i think this is where a lot of Life has gone wrong where parents are just, oh, let's just let them get on with it. You know, no one is putting their foot down anymore. And I think to go and work for someone like Gordon Ramsay is good because he, 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 was, he, he was more than a manager, more than a manager. He was almost like their father, sometimes the way he was talking to them. But at the end of the week, they had all improved dramatically, dramatically. Yeah, well, I know he swears a bit. And when I see the programmes on the telly where he's swearing his head off, I'm not too keen on that. But take that out of the equation. The rest the rest of him, the way he spoke to him. Because some people, you've got to talk to them like that, a little bit more rough. Otherwise, they just walk all over you and they're not going to get anywhere. There are people like myself now, perhaps not when I left school, but now certainly I am self-motivated. If a job goes down, I will look for another one straight away. In fact, uh, last week, I, I did have a job go down. Um, unfortunately, my Sunday nights in Lewisham has finished because the place has closed down, which is very, very sad, really, because that was, it was a great job that was, that Sunday night in Lewisham. It was a bit of a, a, bit of a difficulty uh, getting to the place on Sunday. It was a good sometimes two hours to drive there, all due to traffic. It was only an hour and a little bit to, to come home, but getting there used to take two hours sometimes, which was a real nightmare. But um, uh, uh, it was a great job. Unfortunately, it's closed, so my Sunday nights are free. I'm looking around for a new Sunday night to do. I'm very fortunate to be working uh, every night at the moment, doing something, but not Sunday. 
OK, so Sunday nights is off looking around now for a Sunday night to do because you can't be sitting at home doing nothing. Huh? Uh, the mobile stuff I do Saturday is has gone very well. In fact, I now only have one Saturday left. Uh, I think the n Saturday the 19th of December, is it? Hang on, I'll tell you a second. Oh, hang on, I've got my little book here. I, I still, <laughs> this this amuses my best friend. I still write my bookings down in a diary. None of this electronic old rubbish. It's still in a diary. Oh, hang on. Yeah, tw no, 22nd of December. 22nd of December is the only Saturday night I have free. Uh, all the others are booked with various weddings, 50th birthday parties, 40th birthday parties, whatever, uh, engagement parties. And I've been very, very lucky that the bookings have come in since I decided to start doing the mobile gigs again. It's a little bit more hard work because you have to take around all your own equipment, but I'm loving it. In fact, last weekend I did a engagement party. They weren't a young, young couple. Well, I think the chap was about 37. Uh, she weren't far off that age as well. I, I, one way or the other, I don't know. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, and that was in a little community hall. What a wonderful light. And they asked for some karaoke as well. So I took the karaoke screen and uh, the bits and pieces along well. And um, a, 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 a wonderful night. The beauty of doing weddings and things like that is often they're all over and done with at half past 11, 12 o'clock. And I'm back in bed at two in the morning. Whereas before, when I was doing nightclubs, I was working until four o'clock in the morning. And it gets me a little bit of look. About, three, about two o'clock, you start going downhill, you know. And two, three o'clock, oh, I've got another hour to do yet. I like that. <laughs> You know, but it's another job. You know, you have to you have to travel or do whatever hours the people employing you want to do. Otherwise, you don't get the job. Simple as that. Again, people looking for work. You know, they're going into to be interviewed at places for full time jobs. And then at the interview, they say, well, I can't do Tuesday mornings at eight between eight and ten because I've got to do this. And oh, oh by the way, Thursday afternoon, I need to leave. It after that's not how it works. <laughs> how did people ever think? That, that the job is there to suit their needs. That is not how it works. Often when I was doing the place in Lewisham, and I would tell people, you know, where they say, where do you live? Oh, Bracknell in Berkshire. Oh, my God, that's a long way to travel. Why do you do the job? Well, because that's where the job is. The choice is mine. Do you want the job or not? Yes, I do. So I'll have to travel to it. There seems to be a bad work ethic with people at the moment. Or is it more than 10 minutes from my house? Oh, I can't do that. Well, how, is, how have we got to that point like that? They won't do anything. It's more than 10 minutes from my house. Oh, I can't take that job. Stupid people. Don't want to work. Benefits are too easy to get, aren't they? I think that's changing at the moment, no? Thank God for that. Too many people sitting at home on their arse getting benefits and there's nothing wrong with them. Pretending to have bad backs. Pretending to have bad legs. Pretending they've got depression. Very sad. I get depressed. I still go to work. And believe me, I, I get very depressed. Sometimes. You'll never see it. Okay? You will never see it. I get terribly depressed. I still go to work. Still force myself to get up. And I go to work and earn, earn my money. No benefits here being claimed. You know. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Anyway, uh, back on to that um, uh, uh, do I did Saturday night. Yes, it was an engagement party, a little, little uh, few karaoke numbers. And there was one particular little girl. Her name, beautiful uh, 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 name, Maisie her name was. I think she was about eight, nine, maybe ten years old. And she comes up to me, you know, this, this eye, you know, come, just, come, just about come up to my knee. Can, uh, can I can I say she's, she's got the song book there. So can I sing a song? Yes. I said, can you read? All right. She said, yeah, yeah. Can I sing this one here? So she gives me this. Song. OK, I'll put you on after this record. OK, then. And, and when you talk to a child who wants to sing or, 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 or wants, wants you to do something, they then move away or, or they stand there until until till it happens. And she saw a seat like right next to me and she. I went off with the little book. She put the book down on the table and she sat on the little seat and waited till she was called. And it was just the cutest thing ever. Her name was Maisie. And then, so I brought her up and uh, I told all that, right, everyone get your cameras ready. Little girl going to sing now. And uh, she sung this song. She had the voice of an angel. 
Oh, is it, my phone's ringing there. Why is that? I don't know who that is. Uh, yeah, she absolutely had the voice of an angel. And I just so much wanted to um, use my iPhone and make a little video of her and show it to you. But you know what? It's all very sad. I just thought, oh, no, someone's going to complain that I'm taking pictures of kids and all that business. And I thought, it's, you know, it's just not worth the effort. You know, do you, do you know what I mean? People are just so funny now. They're, they're so frightened that, that everyone is assumed to be dangerous. Everyone is now assumed to be dangerous. And I get that opinion. The other day I was um, in a, uh, a shopping. Where was I shopping now? Bracknell. I was in Bracknell and outside, I remember it now, it was outside H&B. So there's this little, little, I think it was a little girl or a little boy. I was a little bit too far away and she was clutching a, a teddy bear or something under her arm. I, I couldn't quite see because I was, uh, I'd just come out of the church actually. This was Sunday morning. Crying her eyes out walking along and I'm looking around. Well, I can't see any parents anywhere. I thought, well, you can't go over. I don't dare go over and say something to her because someone would come screaming and shouting pedophile or something like that, wouldn't they? You know, and I think it's very sad that we've got to that state now. Where everyone is assumed to be dangerous. Of course, terrible things happen. What about that little girl recently who's um, gone missing? You know, the one and they arrested the uncle. Sorry, I can't remember her name at the moment in somewhere in Wales. I think it was She's just gone missing. Found no one. Completely missing. Terrible. Can you imagine being the parents of someone? Of a child who goes missing like that? Awful. But, I mean, is it is it any worse than it always has been, I wonder? But why is everyone assumed to be dangerous all the time? I could not go over. And, so, and, and then, uh, incidentally, shortly, about 30 seconds later, uh, a, a chap came running along and uh, grabbed the girl's hand, obviously her father, and off they went. So all was fine. But I did not feel I could go over and speak, where's your mum and dad? Or something like that. I thought, no, keep away. Someone will start screaming blue murder. How sad is it that we've got to that state in this society now? Hmm? Your thoughts on that, please. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and I really wanted to show you this little girl singing about a thought, no, it's not worth, if there's any trouble, no, I'm not going to do it, so couldn't do it. But she really had the voice of an angel, this little girl. And there was a little boy singing as well, his name was Louis. He did um, more of a, a, a rap, it's, it's so funny when you see these little kids. He was about, perhaps a little bit older, probably about 12 years old, and he did some rapping song. And he was rapping, and of course the parents are, are wild. And I found that actually I found a little girl's mother, and I went over to her. So I said, "Your girl can really sing." And I wouldn't, I wouldn't just say that just because it's a little girl who's singing. Uh, if she was bad, I just wouldn't say anything. You know, I wouldn't go and say, "Oh, your girl, your daughter sings terrible." I just wouldn't say a thing. But when they're good, I go up to her and I said to her mother, "You know, she's such a good singer." I said, "Does she sing in the choir?" No, no, she just sings along to songs on the radio and things like that. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And of course, some of the older people sung as well. But in particular, it was lovely to see the show. I think, I think there's a market there possibly for uh, a children's karaoke. Possibly not night, but a children's karaoke afternoon somewhere. I'm sure there would be a market for that. Might try that. Might actually try that up near where my sister lives in uh, in Woodhall Spa in Lincolnshire. Perhaps we can uh, hire out a hall and ask parents and uh, people to come along. I wonder wonder how I would do that. It's something I haven't done before. You know, not even, I, I've got to be honest with you, not even so much uh, to make a business out of it. But just to see proud parents when their little ones are going up there and uh, singing songs must be absolute, would be absolutely fantastic to see their faces, to see the look in their faces when their little ones uh, go and sing. Don't know if, um, I don't think you should make that into a competition, really, you know, the best one or anything like that. Perhaps have a little prize for everyone who comes up and sings, you know, to make, to make them all feel that they're all part of it rather than one's better than the other. Anyway, your thoughts on any of that, please. Uh, my email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And talking of little ones, even smaller than that, babies, 
They was very disappointed, boys and girls. I did ask you for suggestions on Christmas presents for my latest um, great niece and great nephew who have been born this year. Great niece Evie, just over six months old now. And George, who's I think just over four weeks uh, old now. What do I get them for Christmas? Any ideas? Any experiences with things to buy for babies? Please let me know on the email, chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Okay, Doug, let's do uh, emails today. Once again, uh, Guillermo, I'm really sorry that I've, I've lost your email somewhere. I did have a look. Is that my best friend? Hello. You can come closer. Come closer. Come closer. And listen, what's that? What do you it's want? just the hand. They love the hand. They love the hand. What do you want? Um... Did you actually want something or yes, did you just do. want to of appear course, on the show in front something. of 50 million people? <laughs> Get on with it, dear. Wi-Fi code, where is it? Wi-Fi code? Well, yeah. what's wrong with your phone? I've got a new phone, haven't I? Oh. Look, everybody, iPhone 5. Um, iPhone 5 before Christmas. Oh, yeah, get the iPhone 5. There it is. Look, look, where's mine? Yeah, you can see the difference now because I've still got an iPhone 4. There's iPhone 4, there's iPhone 5. Yeah, I know, you can't see a difference either, can you? Ha! <laughs> yeah, well, apparently the screen is... It is a bit bigger by about a centimetre. Look at these. I'm going to put these next to... Can you take that cover off for a second for us? Let's put them next to each other. iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 next to each other. Yes, but it's because it's... Will it come off? Of course it will. Exactly. Is, that, is, that a, is that a proper cover or is that like from a market? It's Moshi. OK. Well, first of all... The iPhone 5 is supposed to be lighter. I can't notice much. But you were holding those. Hold, I can. Come I've into the picture, dear. I've done it. I've done it before. Right, try those. You'll have to bend down because I can only see your vulge. Does that feel much different? doesn't, does it? Yes, it does. Oh, it doesn't. Hugely different. Hugely so different. I don't think there's much difference there. OK, now putting them close to each other. All right. The iPhone 5 is definitely thinner. But, you know, by what? Don't drop it. By about two millimetres. I ain't having to write home about, is it? And then the screen size, the iPhone 5, is bigger. Again, by about a centimetre. There you go. I'll put them next to each other. If you're listening, you just you, know, you just have to believe me. There we are. Look. So the, I oh God. the iPhone 5 is, 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 is a bit bigger. But not all that much, really, is it? Anyway. Thank you for Thank showing you. that. We're just on to emails now. I shan't be much longer. I did say it wouldn't be as long as an hour, but we seem to have got to 40-odd minutes again somehow. Somehow. Uh, oh, yes, you want the code. It's on the side there. Do you want the glasses? Can you see that all right? Yeah, here's your torch. It's just on the side. It begins with NCQ. Oh, be careful, because they, oh, no, they might steal. Oh, people can use my Wi-Fi as much as they want. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Emails. Um, yes, Guillermo. I'm sorry, I've lost your email somewhere. I don't know what happened to that. It's disappeared into the system somewhere, OK? Sorry. Send it again, please. Marge wants to know, Hi, Chris, I have a question for you. I remember in one of your audios, it may even have been the last one of you, saying that you would have an MP3 of your weekly shows you were going to upload. Um, that would be a good also uh, if I just wanted to take the audio. Yes, so I've told you how to do that, Marge. OK, simply go to the main website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and you'll find up to, uh, there how to do the downloading and uh, all that business of uh, just the audio side of things. All right? Marge also wants to know, you mentioned in one of your video... What are you doing now? Looking. What, do you want a pen? No, oh, I'm just looking. What are you looking at? Everything. This isn't your domain. Get out of my studio, please. Look, you're treading on stuff. What are we doing for lunch? I'm waving goodbye to the people. Bye, people. Well, they can only see your chin. Which one? <laughs> exactly. Or oh, which face, dear? <gasps> uh, 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 uh. Fish and chips very quickly. Oh, yes, fish and chips. We're having fish and chips for lunch. Quite looking forward to that. Um, Marge wants to know, you mentioned in one of your videos about an American equivalent to your kind of talk show here in the US. I can't recall which video you spoke about and tried to Google something about it, but no avail. It was one of your 2008 videos and wondered if you knew the site or if it still existed or if it did exist. What is the URL? Yes, it was AmericanTalkUSA.com. Let me see if that's still there. 
from my good friend Joe. Oh, what's that? Don't know what that. The AM Network Information Center. Don't know what that. American Talk USA dot com. Let's see if it's still there. Yes, it is. Oh no, it's not. Now that takes me to a Libsyn. It looks like it's gone now. I'm afraid. Uh, let's try a Google search. American Talk USA. Let's try that. Pod feed. Oh, right. Okay. You can... S right. It still seems to be available, some of the old podcasts. There, there he is, Mr. Morris. Okay. Now, he stopped doing the shows in April, May... 2011 but some of his shows are still there let's just see if I can, he won't mind me playing you a little bit is that going to play or not I don't know one second my darlings let's, let's, no that doesn't seem to want to play it says naught I think he's taking them all down looks like he's taking them all down which is a shame because he was a that was a good show. Um, try another site for you. iPodder. What's iPodder? Okay, let's try that one. If I do a Google search on American Talk USA, it, it, it does show you. Play, will that play? No. None of them are playing. I, I think he's gone now. His name was Joe Morris, and uh, he did that for a while, but uh, he has now gone. Um... There is a friend of mine, Suko, her name is Marge. She's in New York. She does a talk show. I'll let you know where that is. He says, looking carefully. <laughs> nope, that's not it. Suko, there it is. Let me tell, tell you where to find this one. Um... Let me see. Perhaps I'll do a, a Google search on her. That might be easier. Yes. Uh, if you type in Suko Sullivan, S-U-K-O, S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N, you'll find various links to her. And she does a, 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 a little um, uh, thing every week as well. OK, once a week. I think she's got, got someone else who talks to her on the on the. Uh, so that's uh, the American one. But uh, American Talk USA, uh, sadly, is uh, no longer. He did stop doing those. OK. Um, hello to James. I think this is the last email today. Yes, because I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Guillermo, I lost your email. One more email today then from James, who says, Hi, Chris. It's a shame uh, the other cat... Uh, didn't get on with uh, your cat. He says, I'm afraid if another cat comes onto the scene, it can be unfair to both of them. I find they bond if you've bought them both right from the start. So, yeah, yeah, I think you're right there. You've got to get the young cats in. Um, but they didn't get on uh, my my one and uh, the, uh, the other cat that was coming in. So I had to stop, stop the other cat coming in simply by sh sh shutting the little cat flap. And I did take her back home a couple of times and think she's gone back home now. So that's a good thing. As for CB radio, I told you, I did tell you I came off the CB radio. I thought it was a bit of a waste of time. Uh, I used to be on it until 10 years ago. When I was first on CB radio, it was brilliant. And there were plenty of people to speak on there. Towards the end, it was very quiet on there and a lot of background noise. There was a bunch of people on there that were very abusive if you were ever tempted to speak to them. If you weren't part of their group, that's why I came off CB radio. I had enough of the nastiness and bad reception. Yes, it's a shame. Uh, how is CB radio doing in the States? Any of our stateside listeners or viewers still using CB radio? Is it still popular over there? Because it was when I was over there in 1979, I think it was. CB radio was huge and I loved it. We had nothing like that over here in the UK then. I just loved it. But is, is it still big over there, I wonder? 
Uh, James says, I've become an amateur radio enthusiast myself a few years ago at my local college, but it's all changed now. Uh, you can find that at uh, rgb.org.uk, where you can take the exam to get your licence for amateur radio. And I did say to you, uh, someone wrote to me privately about that last week, which was uh, very interesting reading. Uh, the licence is £15 a year. There are some people that are very technical in the amateur radio community, but it's not compulsory. It can be very easy to get into, and people on amateur radio can be very friendly bunch, and you can get across the world on it. Don't worry if you're not sure about something on amateur radio. Help is always at hand. And I, I, I do find that fascinating, the whole amateur radio thing. Um, and he also has a message here for Ian Duff, who's a, a regular listener to the show. He says, for Ian Duff, if he wants to do live video work, he could try www.blogtv, B-L-O-G TV, okay, blogtv.com. It's a very good site, but there is a charge for uh, recording video, I'm afraid, which I don't know anything about uh, charges or uh, anything like that. So um, uh, thanks very much. All right. I think that's all today. Oh, did you see that bloke who jumped out of the um of the capsule this week? Was it last Sunday, seven o'clock? I just happened to turn the telly on, and uh, and it was bang on seven when I turned the telly on. And this bloke was jumping out of a capsule into outer space and falling back to the earth. God, do you know there was so much that could have gone wrong with that? That fright. I, would you do that? I won't even go up further than the first, second floor in a block of flats. <laughs> I went up the Eiffel Tower once and I only went to the first level and uh, that was bad enough. I wouldn't go any higher. Isn't it funny? I mean, you know, if you fall off the first level, you're going to die anyway. So you might as well go to the top. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm not, not one with heights. Are you scared of anything like that? Heights or anything like that? Oh, not for me. But this bloke, he came out of that, that capsule. He started tumbling, going round and round. And he, how do you, I wonder how you write yourself, you know, when you're falling out of something like that and you're going round and round and round. How do you stop that? How do you, uh, do you see what I mean? Anyway, not something that I would do, but top marks to him. God, anything could have wrong. The slight, apparently, the slightest hole in his spacesuit would, would, have, would have finished him off. So much that could have done, but he done it. Wow. And when he landed, did you see when he landed? He landed on his feet. Didn't even fall over. He landed on his feet. Top marks. Absolute top man. Top man. What a, what a marvellous achievement that must be. I wouldn't do it, though. That's it from the show this week. Uh, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. be lovely to hear from you. OK, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Several ways of watching or listening to the show. Once again, you can subscribe on iTunes. Uh, either the video or the audio. Just type in United Kingdom Talk there. Uh, you can watch it via YouTube. United Kingdom Talk uh, is on YouTube. Type it into the search engine or you can look up my username there, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right. Or indeed, the main website for these shows is at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There you can just download the audio version or watch the video word version. OK, and that's it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Have a good week. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye bye. <laughs>